What doeth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doeth the prophet? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he hath offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou uh, how faith wrought with his works, and by his works was faith made perfect? And the scriptures was fulfilled, which said, uh, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Ye, uh, yea, see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way for as the body uh, excuse me for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also let's go to the lord in prayer heavenly father we come to you tonight dear god we want to thank you for the word of god we thank you Heavenly father uh, lord that as we uh, begin to embark on the scripture conference this coming weekend i pray heavenly father that we would be ready to receive what you have for us. Lord, I ask, dear God, that, Lord, you would help us to be faithful, to attend all the services, and help us, dear God, that, Lord, uh, we our faith can be increased. And so, Lord, it seems that uh, this faith that we're talking about tonight, Lord, it seems that the faith of God's people is dying off. And I pray that today, Heavenly Father, that we would protect ourselves and help us, Heavenly Father, to... Uh, to know the faith that we have is wrought by you, and, Lord, that we can see the fruit that you so much desire in our lives. And so, Lord, I pray that you bless this people, uh, these people, and myself uh, according to the Scriptures, for it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. So faith is something that we most commonly talk about, something that we usually make mention once in a while and so forth. We know that the Bible uh, teaches in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, uh, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, faith is something that we uh, must learn and exercise. Uh, it's given to us at salvation, but after salvation... Uh, God allows us to take the faith that he had given us and to exercise that uh, in our life. Uh, it's impossible to please God without faith. Well, what it would be like tonight if we could get a hold of that in our hearts to know that uh, nothing that I can do in my life can please God unless it's done by faith. You know, faith is going to be that... Uh, that meter in uh, when we get to heaven. Faith is going to be that thing that uh, here, uh, as it says, uh, such as that where when we go to God, God rewards us. But faith is that thing that's going to be measured in our life. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be put under uh, uh, that scrutiny what we did with that faith. We know that Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Thank God that God gives us the gift of faith, uh, the gift of faith to live a life that is unknown 
to mankind. I mean, think about it. Uh, you, today, you say, what do you mean, preacher, uh, by that statement? I want to say to you today that none of us has ever lived the Christian life twice. You see? We do a lot of things over and over and over and over. And uh, why? Because we, we go back and we find our mistakes and each time we try to do it better. But I want to say to you the Christian life has only been lived once. And so everything that we do for God, our, our growth, our maturity, our wisdom, our knowledge, all of that is only done by one time. And so we live by faith in our life. We're saved by faith and we live by faith. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. And so what's the problem in our society today? Well, our problem is that uh, everybody wants to walk by sight and not by faith. You're saying, what does that mean? Well, faith is simply where you go into the unknown or into the dangers and you trust God to get you through it. You trust God to kind of get you out of all of that. And so we, we all have stories uh, about faith. Uh, we all have that uh, reality in our lives that describes us that whether we believe God or not. Romans chapter 14, verse 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. You know, that's a reality that needs to be driven into our hearts today. Uh, we, we, uh, today, we, we got in this complacent Christianity to where uh, we just want to sit back and we uh, say that we're saved and we say that uh, we're, uh, we're right with God and we're waiting on God, and yet, but yet we, it seems that our faith is not growing. Now, I'm not here to cause any grief among anybody, but I want to say to you tonight that uh, if we're not growing in our faith, if we're not moving forward in, in God's direction, then do we have faith? I mean, do we really say we believe in God? I mean, do we, are, are we really uh, have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Because when you study in the uh, New Testament and you look into the lives of the disciples, uh, Jesus came walking by the way and said, come, follow me. And that's what they did. And I believe that today that God does that in our lives as well. Imagine where you're at today and how you got there. Uh, uh, how, imagine how all the things you uh, got to, uh, to be where you're at today. You, you went through trials and you went through death and uh, you, uh, uh, you went through heartache and sorrow and all of that. Why? Well, because here... We still here, and we come to this point in our life that we look into the lives of other people. And other people in their faith, it seems that they're dying. And yet, uh, we need to stop and ask the question about our faith. You see? And so, uh, here James, he points out that there's three kinds of faith uh, in this chapter. And I want to be able to go through tonight, just in a short time, uh, promise you I won't keep you because I have a two and a half hour drive ahead of me uh, to go and pick up my precious family. But I want to say to you tonight uh, that, uh, uh, listen, uh, faith is something that we all struggle with. Amen? Uh, we struggle uh, with putting God to the challenge, if you say. Because God wants us to put to his challenge. But some of us aren't bold enough to put him to the challenge like he, he wants us to. God wants us to go out into the deserts of this world and depend upon him to feed us and nourish us. That's kind of hard, amen? It's kind of hard to just pick up and, and move on. We think about uh, the Bible made mention about Abraham. Uh, God went and told Abraham, uh, leave that kindred and come. Go to the place that I will show you. You know, Abraham didn't question in that. He just picked up his pieces, picked up what he had, and he left. No goodbyes, no, uh, no uh, uh, see you next time, no, no return. He just picked up and he left. Can you imagine the things that Abraham went through? Can you imagine the 
sorrow and the heartache and, 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 and the questioning. What is God doing with my life? Listen, folks, I want to say to you tonight that, uh, again, in Romans 14, 23, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. You know, God's called you and I to be individuals of faith. Amen? Let's look at these uh, three uh, faiths that uh, James describes here uh, in this text. Our first one is found in the verses 14 through 17. Let's look at those verses. What doeth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doeth it profit? Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Here, the first faith that James describes is a dead faith. A dead faith simply substitutes words for deeds. Uh, people, uh, they, with this kind of faith, they know the vocabulary, uh, they know the Lord's Prayer, and they know a little bit about a doctrine, but their faith is never exercised the way that God wants it to be exercised. I want to say to you that uh, this kind of faith, a dead faith, is simply where members sit in the pews and they're comfortable of uh, uh, hearing a little sermonette they're comfortable uh, to uh, uh, hearing uh, the music that they uh, to their preferring, but it's okay that they come to church, hear a little sermon, hear some music, and go back and live into the lifestyle that they have always lived into. You say, what do you mean, preacher? I want to say to you tonight that uh, these folks, they can quote the Bible verses. Uh, they can quote the, uh, and they know uh, some of the meaning of the scripture, but their faith is dead. They don't really know what it pertains to. And I, I want to say to you that a dead faith is destroying our churches today. You're saying, what do you mean, preacher? I want to say to you that these kind of people, they have like an intellectual kind of faith. Uh, they got it in the mind. Uh, they understand that there's a real God. Uh, they understand uh, some things about God, but it never, never penetrates the heart. This kind of intellectual faith uh, is simply a faith uh, that is destroying our young children. Why? What do you mean? Well, I want to say to you today, where, where is our adults teaching the young children how to obey the commands of God? You know, I, I'm saying to you today, folks, uh, there's a lot of dead faith in our churches because when you, uh, when you got, uh, when the services are going on, you hear people in the murmuring. Uh, you hear people in the back talking and, 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 and communing with one another Why things are going on. You're saying, what does that mean? Uh, you're just picking on people in church. Uh, folks, I'm telling you right now, if you're talking in church and God is trying to, uh, uh, trying to get a hold of your heart and, and, and you got the services, somebody's singing, somebody's preaching, and you're talking or texting in church, you got a dead faith. Your faith is not alive. Well, we don't like to hear those kind of preaching. Uh, we don't like to hear that to say that you have a dead faith. You sit on the pews and you sit there, you murmur and you groan about all these things, but I want to say to you, your faith is dead. And so what is about this kind of faith? I want to say to you tonight that it's destroying us uh, 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 every day. We let this go on. This kind of faith, we allow this kind of faith uh, to uh, attack us. We, we allow this faith uh, to be sorbed up into our life, and that's not what God's called us into. Amen? And this kind of faith, can you ask a question? Can dead faith save an individual? Well, look with me in verse 17, if you would. Verse 17, here the Bible says, Even so faith, if it have not works, 
is dead, being alone. You're going to hear this individual saying, well, I believe in Jesus. I know. I, I, I know he's alive. I believe in Jesus. And yet have dead works. The Bible says their faith is dead. Folks, there's a reality that when you and I get saved, there is a change. We know that in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 5, 17, therefore being a man, being Christ, he's a new creature. Amen? Amen. He's a new creature. Amen. Why? Uh, it, it, not to live unto dead things. Amen? Uh, we're to live unto those lively things, those things that will uh, penetrate the heart. Look with me in verse 20 of our chapter. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? He's asking this question. Can faith uh, save? Well, the answer is uh, this kind of faith, dead faith, uh, intellectual faith cannot save you. Amen? And so what are you saying? Well, even verse 26 gives us the description. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. You know what our problem is today? Our problem is that we're going around trying to convince folks that we have a live faith when simply in reality we have a dead faith. See, our faith uh, has not been, uh, our faith that we have has never penetrated the heart. That's why we don't want to obey the commands of God. We don't want to follow through it. Why? Because it has no relation to our lives. We want to live around the dead things. Why? Because we're dead individuals. We have a dead faith. So we want everything to be just like us, dead. If, 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 if everything is dead, then there, I don't have to pretend, uh, uh, pretend or put any life out there. It's a terrible uh, uh, reality. But that's what we're going through in our churches. Any declaration of faith does not result in a changed life, and good works is simply a false declaration. You know, we want good works in our life, because we want people to consider us good people. And that's a terrible shame. That's a terrible testimony before God. Because if God does live inside of us, if God is in this heart, uh, this heart of hearts, if God does know me, who I am, uh, as the Bible says, that, uh, that even in the womb, he understood us and he knew who we were. If God does know me, then he ought to be able to know how to get in touch with my heart. And yet, it seems that we live uh, in a society of dead faith Christians. You know, I, I, I just don't like the idea where folks are claiming Jesus for their own luxury of sin. I don't like it. I mean, there ought to be a reality uh, in our lives that uh, we are doing everything we can to change this life of ours. Dead faith is counterfeit faith, and it lulls the person into a false confidence of eternal life. You know, tonight we need to question the kind of faith that we have. I wonder tonight that uh, the faith that we have, are we deceiving ourselves? Because uh, uh, the Bible teaches that we are to have that lively hope that is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? God calls us. Come out and be separate, saith the Lord. If there's no desire to be separate from the world, if there's no desire to be separate from, uh, uh, from the flesh, if there's no desire to be separate from your sins, you have a dead faith. And that faith cannot save you. Folks, there ought to be, re there ought to be a reality in our life. Don't, don't, don't claim Christianity. Don't claim the name of Jesus Christ when you sit there in a the pew with a dead faith. Do we have this kind of faith tonight? Uh, is our walk, does our walk uh, uh, measure up with our talk? Uh, does our works uh, add up to our words? I mean, is there a reality of a faith uh, that is simply alive before God? You know, I've been preaching for four years. Been the best thing I've ever done in my life. But I want to say to you today, there's a struggle 
in Christianity, and it's a struggle uh, to, uh, to, to live the right kind of faith. Why? Because it's like, it's like an individual rowing upstream. Everybody chooses to die in their faith. There is no one, uh, I mean, there is no one that, uh, that loves Jesus Christ. They're scared to talk about him. They're scared to let folks know that they're saved. They're scared to do anything. I can't go out and I can't push against the way because uh, folks will find out if I'm saved. And I don't want them to find out that I'm saved. I like doing my sin. I like holding on my sin. And I just want to stay like this, live in a dead faith, and claim eternal life. That's their idea. But I want to say to you today, it's not God's idea. It's not God's idea. There was a preacher once said, no man can come to Christ by faith and remain the same any more than he uh, can come in contact with 220 volt wire and remain the same. You put your hand on a 220 volt and hold on to that, buddy, I promise you, there's going to be some changes in your life. Amen? I tell you what, what would it be like that when we grab a hold of Jesus, amen? amen. Uh, some things are going to fall off, amen? Uh, uh, whatever you got in your hand, you're going to let it go, amen? I tell you that 220, I've heard some bad stories about it. I've heard uh, 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 about the 220 volts. I mean, uh, they get stacked by a 220 volt and burn up right there, Johnny on the spot. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, they say that uh, you have to almost, uh, uh, I hear stories being in construction where folks grab hold of the 220 and, uh, and the guy run over there and get a two by four and whack the guy because it's got such of a pull on the individual. You know, we do that with our dead faith. We're holding on to the little things of this world we don't want to let go of the world. We want to hold on to it. We want to cherish what we got. Well, Lord, you don't know. I've worked for years and years for this, and I finally got it, and I'm not going to let it go. I think about folks doing that in positions. I think people uh, give in their lives. And uh, I remember being at Boeing and, and, uh, and some of the supervisors that simply give up their families, give up their lives for the job. And I'm going to tell you, that job is not going to take care of them one day. It's just a dead faith. I hear, I hear uh, the superintendent tell me, I want to believe in God. Hey, I like your faith. It seems alive. It seems like you love your Lord. I want to be able to have that, but I can't. Because he don't sow to his soul. You know, intellectual faith cannot save you. I wonder tonight if we have an intellectual faith. Maybe tonight you're convinced, well, hey, uh, I'm saved. Well, I'm, I, I'm glad for that. And I'm not, here to, I'm, not, I'm not here to test your faith. That's not the responsibility of a preacher. And I think that, uh, I think that uh, a lot of folks, they hold the preacher uh, in a way, uh, hold the preacher like, well, if he don't walk this way, he don't walk that way, well, then they're going to hold him under scrutiny. And that's fine. That's okay. Because it can't be no more scrutiny what Jesus Christ is holding under. Amen? Because this Bible is alive. And uh, any, any man that preaches out of this Bible is going to be, uh, going to be like the Bible says uh, in Hebrews. Uh, when we go to God in faith, uh, he's, uh, he's a diligent rewarder for those who diligently seek him. And I'm glad for that. Amen? I'm glad that Jesus knows my heart. Amen? Amen. But you know something? We got to be careful about allowing a dead faith into our lives. It's so easy. It's so easy. You know, you know how easy it is? We can, we can trust God for the first time and the second time to get us through with it. We can trust God after a while and say, Lord, I got it. Let me go. I got it now. I'm on my own. 
And we could be starting living our life, living the Christian life, and we think we'll go to the point where we don't need God. I, I got it, God. Leave me alone. I, I, I know what I'm doing. And that's what most Christians do. The reality is we can't live this Christian life without God. We need God every step of the way. Folks, if I ever get like that, I pray that you take me uh, I, t I pray that you get that two by four off in the corner and uh, come and knock me off of that 220 volt of dead faith because I don't want it. Amen. I don't want it. Let's look at the second faith that uh, uh, James is speaking of here tonight. That's found in verses 18 through 19. Yea, a man say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. We looked at the first faith, and that was a dead faith. Here, it seems that the Bible is given the description of a demonic faith. You say, what do you mean, brother? I'm saying to you today that a demonic faith is simply where the Bible describes that in verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You know, I want to say to you today, this kind of faith, this demonic faith, is simply that there, there is a belief, there is no belief in God. Watch this. They believe uh, in, uh, in God in a way, but uh, I think about some of those who have a demonic faith, and that is uh, individuals who are an atheist. An atheist is a person who disbelieves or lacks belief in the existence of God or gods. We know that we're not talking about gods. But that is the dictionary definition of an atheist. Uh, but we know that it pertains that those who have the lack of belief in even believing that God is even in existence. But then the second one is the agnostics. Uh, a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God or anything beyond uh, material phenomena, uh, a person who claims neither faith nor disbelief in God. You say, what does all that mean to me tonight? Well, I want to say to you because, folks, let's be real. You know, we, 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 what, what I'm saying to you, we, we're only concerned about what's in this building. Amen. We know that in this building, this is God's house that God has given to us. And we're concerned about that. And we get we get we lose out the connection, what the world is doing, what everybody else is doing. Why? Because we want to be focused in here. And I think it's a great thing of being focused in the God's house. But I also believe that there's a danger if we don't realize what's going out there in the world. Let me tell you what happened uh, was, this is a, a, a Facebook post, and you can go on there and you can look at it yourself, but it is on the Facebook of First Baptist Church. Watch this. Here's the uh, comment. Hello. Just a few questions I have. I was wondering about how many people attend your church. I ask because I do not like mega churches. I stopped going to a church uh, a long time ago, and even though I was raised in a small church and my father became a pastor in his spare time, I left church because it seems like most have lost their purpose to serve. I am looking for a nice, smaller church with good people that have honestly in their heart and not just for show to say they help. I have identified myself as an agnostic and at times an atheist. I do believe in God, just are having a hard time finding him 
and my purpose in this life. I have been following your church's page, and, it's, uh, and it seems really friendly and not, uh, and not too big of size. Also, when are your services times and Sunday school? I have an 8-year-old and a 17-month-old uh, boys that would be attending. Thank you uh, so much for taking the time to read this. There's a reality that, I, I, that, uh, that here we're getting caught up that we're focusing, I don't get me wrong, I think that it should be a great focus, but I also believe that there's a reality, the kind of faith that we ought to be living. And you say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, I want to say to you tonight, because, the, uh, the, because the, the, this individual made a comment uh, that she was agnostic and uh, sometimes an atheist. She don't know where God is in her life. She don't even know her purpose. She don't even know why she was even here. And I want to say to you today that uh, if you sit in the pews and you live with a dead faith, eventually you're going to have a demonic faith because you're going to have a faith that destroys people's lives. This church is to be used to teach and educate people in God's faith. Show them where God is. Help them to know the Bible. Show them how they can get in touch with God. Folks, I want to say to you today that I believe that in churches, we got too many demonic faith Christians in our churches today that is destroying what God has placed or built upon our lives. You say, brother, you're too hard. I don't think I'm hard enough. Because the reality is that we like coming to church, and we focus here. And I believe there ought to be a, a right focus. I believe that. I believe that wholeheartedly. And every, with every answer that I, that I have as a man, I believe there ought to be right focus. But I also believe there's a reality that God has left you and I here to be those ones that would, uh, that would help these people to know the Bible, to know uh, Jesus Christ, to know uh, where he is, and to help them in their purpose. But if you're unwilling to be that kind of individual, I don't, I don't, I don't like your faith. I, I, don't, I don't like it because uh, here we can go back, even the devils believe and tremble. I'm concerned that uh, if you're going to allow folks to come into your life and you're just going to watch them uh, live a lifestyle and, and never, uh, never try to help them out, never try to educate them, I'm concerned about the kind of faith that you have. We like to be Bible thumpers. We like to preach the Bible. We like to hold up the King James Bible and claim all its authorities. And watch people go straight to hell in the process. You know, I'll tell you what, it would be best for us that we not only hold up the Bible, but we apply it to our lives as well. I believe that God has allowed us to be in this church to form up the Sunday school classes to form up uh, these, uh, uh, these programs to, uh, 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 to make a, a specific need into their lives. Uh, this uh, individual uh, has a great need, and you have the answer. You have the capability. You have the means to help this individual to one day have a faith that can claim in her life, in their life, to say, I know who the Son of God is. You know, our world is struggling with that. Baptist churches, churches all over America uh, are failing. Why? Because they're living with a dead faith. And eventually, if they don't do something about that faith, it'll turn into a demonic faith. It has to be demonic. It has to be demonic to sit there and watch uh, 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 men and women and children go straight to hell because you're too unwilling to live with a live faith. You're too, willing, you're too unwilling to uh, obey the commands of God. And yet we come to these ideas. 
Well, I like to have been there when James was preaching this message. Amen. I like to see how James would have presented this to something, know something here, uh, that he had walked with the Lord. And now he's speaking to this church, speaking these words to you and I. I want to say to you that this demonic faith, uh, it can simply may believe that uh, they may even believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, Mark chapter 3 Verse, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. An unclean spirit, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. See, the, even the demons, uh, they acknowledge his deity. Man, they understand that. Luke chapter 8, verse 31. And they uh, besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. You remember this story here? Uh, is where the uh, one uh, guy possessed with the legion of demons. And yet uh, they went out into the swine. The Bible says about 2,000 of them perished into the, uh, uh, into the deep of the ocean. Yet all these demons, they knew who the Son of God was. Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 and 29, the Bible reads, And he was come to the other side into the country of the uh, Gorgonias. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fears, so that no man might pass by the way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? See, even the devils and the demons believe uh, in God, but their faith can never save them. You consider that today, that even a demonic faith cannot save you. We see that uh, the man with a dead faith, he was touched by the intellect, but according to this verse, uh, watch it, uh, let's look in at verse 18 to verse 19. Uh, yea, a man say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show thee my faith by my works. Verse 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. Watch it, the devil believes. Uh, the devils also believe and tremble. So here we looked in the first dead faith, uh, the first faith, the faith there was dead. It was an intellect faith. But here, uh, this is about a demonic faith, and it seems that a demonic faith has emotions. So it deals with also the intellect and the emotions. Why? Because they tremble. But this faith needs to be understood that it cannot save as well. May I say to you tonight that true uh, saving faith involves something more and, and something more that can be recognized and it can be seen in a changed life. Go, uh, that changed life is simply uh, when we surrender unto God. Go with me verse 18. Yea, a man say, thou hast faith and I have works. Here it is. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You know, I'm, I'm concerned where we're at today in Christianity. You know, we, we're stuck on this idea of looking back into the past, talking about what, how things used to be, how it was back then, and yet we're today living, wondering, pondering what happened to that translation. You say, what do you mean? Well, I want to say to you today, the past can never be changed. It's there. All it is is memories. But God didn't call you and I into memory. God doesn't, uh, he didn't name this church uh, uh, First Baptist Memory, right? This church 
uh, is a church today that exists because of those men and women who had faith. But I want to say to you today uh, that uh, uh, we, uh, we, we're allowing uh, uh, this faith that was once there today in our life. Uh, it's like we don't have faith. And, and it's like our faith is much more deader than the faith that they had. Because we're watching folks go to hell. We're not doing. We, we, we're existing. We're here. We come to church. But could you say uh, with verse 18, he says, verse 18, James said uh, in the latter part, I will show thee my faith by my works. Boy, I tell you, that hits hard. You know, it hits straight to the heart. Amen. Because what kind of works do we have as individuals in this church that shows people that we have faith? This kind of faith cannot save. A dead faith cannot faith uh, save. We need to do more than just believe on God. We need to, re we need to act upon this. Here, the, the, uh, James says, I will show thee my faith by my works. I want to say to you tonight, we need individuals in this church. Yes, that live by faith. Yes, uh, folks are going to come to this church and, and uh, they're not going to they're not going to know all the Bibles like you and I do. But it will be our responsibility to teach them that. Because that's the way God has placed it. Amen. And so last of all, I want to get to this the kind of faith that does save and this kind of faith that does change and this kind of faith that does excite and that's found in verses 20 through 26 here the bible reads but wilt thou know o vain uh, o vain man that faith without works is dead was not abraham our father justified by works when he had offered isaac his son upon the altar seest thou how uh, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, uh, was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Yea, then, uh, yea, then, uh, yea, see then how by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. This kind of night, uh, this kind of faith tonight, that I want to allure to you, uh, I want to try to dangle that out there uh, to you. And that is to have a dynamic faith. I believe that we deserve that in this church. I believe that this kind of faith it should be a faith that, be, that could be exercised. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 states this. So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You want to encourage somebody tonight? Show them what kind of faith you got. Where you can come to church, you know. I I, I see that uh, <clears throat> this uh, this scripture conference coming up. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, they can say whatever they want to say, uh, but uh, 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 but uh, we all make times and do our own things. And I want to say to you tonight uh, that if you're going to have a dynamic faith, then you're going to plan on your schedule to be in every service. You know, maybe uh, today we need to see what kind of faith that we do have. Because uh, if, if the hearing, if, if faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God, then uh, why is it that we're struggling with hearing the word of God? We, we want to have a dynamic faith, but we don't want to hear the word of God. And so according to the Bible, that if you're going to have 
uh, faith, if your faith is going to grow, if your faith is going to mature, if you're going to be that individual you want everybody to look at, then it appears to me you need to be under the word of God. You need to be under his preaching. Dynamic faith simply uh, doesn't just involve the mind or the emotions of an individual, but dynamic faith involves the whole man. It takes the whole man uh, to be the kind of man or, or woman that God wants them to be. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, I'm glad that we have folks that think with the mind. I think that's a wonderful thing. Amen. Uh, it might be hard for some most uh, for uh, somebody like me. It might be hard to think by the mind. But you know, we all have emotions, and I believe that to, uh, I believe that today we we live more on our emotions than we do anything else. See, we we don't we don't react. Uh, uh, we react uh, to a subject. We don't respond to it. When we respond to it, we respond in the right way. We think with our mind how we're going to handle the problem. We think about uh, how we're going to take care of it, responding. But a lot of us react, and we re react on our emotions. But when it comes to having a dynamic faith, it's going to involve uh, the whole man because in the whole man is the heart of the issues. And Jesus said all the, all, all the issues of life are affected by the heart. So, the, uh, so, the, uh, so a, a, a dynamic faith involves the intellect, the emotions, and the will, all of those things that uh, enable us to do what God has called us to do. I think about how the mind, it can understand the truth, amen? Uh, we can read the Bible and, and God can uh, exercise his Holy Spirit in our minds and teach us what truth is. Think about the heart. The, the heart desires and rejoices uh, in truth. Right? And that's the kind of people we want. We want to be able to know that, hey, I'm going to be told what's right. Think about the will. The will is what causes us to act upon what is truth. And so today, you could be uh, exercising the mind, or your heart and not exercise your will, and you're, you're going to lack in that faith. You're going to lack what you need to help you go further. I, folks, I want to say to you today, you know, we, uh, we need to stop talking about uh, the, the Lord is coming back. We need to stop talking about uh, the rapture because it's not doing us any good. You say, what do you mean, preacher? I'm saying to you tonight, we need to stop talking about uh, the rapture and stop talking about uh, going up in the rapture. Stop talking about the Lord coming back and get us and start living like we believe it. Amen. There's a difference there. When we just talk about the Lord's coming back, he's going to come back and get me. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. And you sit there in the pew with a dead faith. You know, God's not... Called us to sit and wait, but he's called us to work and wait. Amen. True saving faith leads to action. It is not an intellect. It's not emotionalism. It is simply obedience to the word of God. And I want to say to you today, you, you're going to have an opportunity here soon to illustrate that dynamic faith. You know what? I want you to be an encouragement tonight. I was talking with Brother Lamont today. And uh, you know something he, uh, that I allude to him. I said, Brother Lamont, he said, I, I hope the people are, are, are ready. I said, Brother Lamont, they're always ready for you to come. I said, that, I said, this church loves you and they can't wait till you get here. And you know, he said, uh, he said that church has always had a special place in my heart. But I want to say to you, men like Bobby Lamont, I want to come to this church. I want to be in their presence. I want to be around them, and I want to absorb and sponge up all that I can 
for somebody like that. You say, well, preacher, I thought you said you don't put people on pedestals. You're right. I don't place people on pedestals. But I'm going to tell you right now that I consider that that man uh, and what he's doing having a dynamic faith. I see the faith that he's doing uh, is doing something extraordinary for the glory of God. What are you doing? What am I doing to bring honor and glory for God? What am I doing? Where, where are the souls being saved? Where are the souls being baptized? Where are the souls being discipled for the Lord Jesus Christ? There's a difference. And I'll tell you, the difference is, is that uh, folks down there uh, in that Bible barn are living a dynamic faith while you and I are sitting here in our pews, comfortable where we're at, living with a dead faith and wondering why things aren't going the way they're supposed to. There's a testimony to be made. And that testimony is through a dynamic faith. Look what Abraham uh, notice what the Bible says about Abraham. Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? I want you to get what he's saying here. Uh, and notice the vernacular there. Uh, and was not Abraham. The question is placed upon Abraham. Did Abraham have faith? Watch it. Was not Abraham our father justified by works again James is illustrating that if you have faith in your life then you have works justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar you know I think about Abraham offering Isaac on his altar you know what that you know what that is that, that, I mean, he, he was given his only possession. We know that Isaac uh, was the promised child. We know that Isaac was his only son. He was given his only and his only uh, possession, his, uh, the very treasures of his heart. He was placing it on the altar of God. That's why he had a dynamic faith. Can I ask you tonight? What are you placing on the altar? What are you giving God that's going to be costly into your life? Notice what he says in verse 22. Seest thou have faith? Uh, seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect? Now I want to say to you tonight that the only way that you can have a, a, a dynamic faith is that you have works in your life after salvation. Works cannot save you. Works cannot earn any rewards uh, for salvation or anything like that. But once you have given your heart to Jesus Christ, works is a part of your life. Uh, once you give your life to Jesus Christ, Works has now become an instrument uh, to help you to bring honor and glory for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so notice how, the, the, how it's saying, Seest thou have faith wrought with works? By his works was faith made perfect. And that, perf uh, that perfecting of that faith was simply that he did it through obedience. And so tonight, I believe that we could have dynamic faith. But if we're going to sit in our pews and be disgruntled, be unwilling to follow the leadership in this church and, uh, and fight the Holy Spirit, that I'm going to have it my way kind of idea, well, we'll never see any dynamic faith. It'll, it'll, it'll continue on into dead faith, and eventually it'll become demonic faith, We'll sit right here, relaxed, on our way to heaven, watching men and women go straight to hell. It's the kind of faith that God wants to illustrate in your life today. 
The kind of faith that Abraham had produced, uh, it was a faith through obedience, and that faith brought out a perfecting in his life, and that perfecting was that he was being perfected, his belief in God. He believed in God. Watch it. Verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Boy, I tell you, I like that. Uh, I'm glad that today I can look in the Bible, and, uh, and the Bible gives me those uh, illustrations to know what it should be like. Amen? Uh, notice how uh, in verse 23 it says, And the scripture was fulfilled. I wonder today, is the scripture being fulfilled in your life. Are you saying, well, brother, I'm not, I'm not a prophecy. Well, no. Uh, uh, you know, we're not, we're not part of the Bible, per se, written in there to where we're saying that, uh, okay, uh, well, uh, was not uh, Robert Casey, right, uh, our father? Was not, uh, was not Odell Daniels uh, our, our father? It's not saying not like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, that uh, if Jesus Christ is in your life, uh, if, if Jesus Christ is your Savior, you're part of the Bible. Because it's the same faith that we're to be exercising that Abraham had. Here it is. Watch it. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God. Do you believe God tonight? Are you, one, are you an individual uh, to believe in God tonight? I'm not talking about uh, just simply knowing about his deity. I'm not talking about just knowing about his name. But I'm talking about that you actually are believing in God. You are following him in obedience. You are allowing him to be your Lord and Savior in your life. That's believing in God. Hey, uh, believing in God through Abraham's story, uh, he put his only, his all, all his possession that he had, all his hopes and his dreams that he had of his son on the altar. What are we placing on the altar that says we believe in God? Are you putting your sins on the altar? Are we, putting, are we putting those doubts and those fears and those struggles, all of those things that keep us and hold us away from being what God's called us to be? Are we placing those on the altar? Because if you're not, then you're not living a dynamic faith. You're not believing in God. Your, your faith, you say you have faith, but you have no works. Are, are, you, are you forsaking the past? Are you forsaking your failures? Are you forsaking all of those, uh, uh, all those things? Because if you're not, you have no works. God is looking for Christians who are going to be dynamic in their faith, who are going to not only say that they believe in God, but show them by their works. You know, the Bible says that... Uh, that uh, uh, we are to behave ourselves in the house of God. About, a, about uh, uh, several weeks ago, here a man was sitting here singing, beautifully singing the, music, uh, the song, folks in the back talking. That's not believing in God, folks. That is simply a shame. And it's not right. It's not the faith that God wants to have. That's a dead faith. God's not calling us to have a dead faith. May I say to you tonight, in closing, a faith that we're looking for is a faith that will lead to that perfecting of the saint. I wonder tonight, have you stopped and think about the kind of man or woman that God wants you to be. Now, I know we have our frailties. I, I, I understand that.
Nobody can tell me more than that. Anybody. I know we, we have our failures and frailties and, and all of that. I, know, I, I, I got that. But what is your image that God has placed in your heart? The kind of man or kind of woman that God wants you to be? Or even do you have an image? Because if you don't have an image, then, well, that might be a start for you. But I believe that God has given us an image. And that image is that we're to be more like Jesus. And if all we do is, uh, is, is nitpick and criticize and, and, uh, and, and, and blame this and murmur that, that's not the image that God has given to you. That's not the image that God wants of you. Say. And so tonight, God has called us to have a dynamic faith, a faith that will, well, that will see a perfecting in our life. And so tonight, would you surrender with me? Because I, I tell you, uh, I don't want to live the last so many days of my life with a dead faith. That's not what I want. I don't want my kids to be exposed to that. You don't want to be exposed to that. And so the only way that we can change that is that if you purpose in your heart to live up for a dynamic faith, that you're going to, in your life, fulfill the scriptures, let the scriptures do its duty or do its work in your life. And if you purpose that and I purpose that, God can build something great here. And until then, well, we're just going to die off one by one. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.